By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I bring to you a very exciting match between two very cool decks here. And it's actually a round four match of the Frost Giant Cup, a tournament that is held in uh, Hilversum, the Netherlands. And if you haven't seen it yet, I've also posted a round one and a round two match of this tournament. Unfortunately, I do not have the round three uh, match. Something went wrong with the recording, but I do have this beautiful round four match between a Cobalt deck and a Tron Sword of the Ages deck. So uh, this is very exciting. And uh, before I start with the actual uh, match, I just quickly want to go over a few key cards. If you'd like to go straight to the match itself, what you can do is check the description below and click on the timestamp and it'll take you directly to the first game. The player on the left is Frank and he's actually playing with the Cobalt deck and he's playing with a black red and I believe also a splash of uh, blue version of the Cobalt deck and he's playing obviously with the Cobalts, the Cobalts of Kirk Keep, so for zero you get a zero one creature and he's also playing with some uh, other kobolds that kind of give the kobolds extra power and two cards that I want to mention here are kobold taskmaster because they give all the kobolds plus one plus zero and he's also playing with uh, roga of Kerr keep and I believe uh, this card is, is very risky actually let's let's look at this card for a moment it's two red and two black and two and all your kobolds of Kerr keep gain plus two plus two and you have to pay three red during your upkeep or Roga and all Kobolds of Kirky become tapped and come under the opponent's control. So that is pretty insane. So if you have some kind of uh, land removal uh, as, as the opponent of this deck and you can somehow make it, arrange it, maybe a Winter Orb, make the game in such a way that you can actually control the Kobolds, I mean, that will be pretty insane. And I know that um, Frank is playing against the opponent on the right and he's playing with the Sword of the Ages. So in theory, his opponent can take over the Kobolds, blow up this, and then use the Sword of the Ages to, to blow them all up. So that would be ridiculous. Now, obviously, I don't know if this is um, uh, going to happen, but we'll get to, to the other deck uh, in a moment. Let's first uh, just have another uh, little talk about Frank's deck. So Frank's playing with the Kobolds of, of Kirkheap. That's his idea, but he's also playing with Red. So um, his, his tactic pretty much is dealing early damage with the Kobolds and then finish it off uh, using Burn. And I believe he's also playing with a few dragons. And that's lure-wise is really nice because the Kobolds uh, have a dragon as their god. So they actually want to become a dragon. Um, I, I believe at least. So if I got it wrong lure-wise, please leave a comment and, and explain this connection. It would be very much appreciated. So that is the Kobolds deck of the player on the left. The player on the right is playing with a deck called Tron of the Ages, or at least that's how I've called the deck. And it's based on the Urza uh, land combination. So if you have an Urza tower, an Urza's mine and Urza's power plant, uh, your lands can produce more than one mana. They actually produce, the tower produces three and the mine and the power plant produce two each. So that means that all of a sudden your three lands give you seven mana in total. Now this deck is pretty much based upon um, around the idea of that you get your Urza lands in order that you have a lot of mana and then you go and cast a lot of mana costing spells now obviously you think of uh, a fireball i'm pretty sure it's in this deck as well but what this player did is actually way cooler because he's playing with a sword of the ages and his sword of the ages is an artifact from legends it's a rare and it's six and it reads sword of the ages comes into play tapped and then you can tap it and sacrifice the sword and as many creatures as you choose and sword does the combined power of these creatures and damage to one target. Sacrifice creatures and sword are removed from the game entirely. So this is um, what I talked briefly about in the introduction of uh, the Kobold deck, is that if um, he can find a way to gain control of the Kobolds of the opponent and have the Sword of the Ages in play at the same time, I mean, that would just be disastrous for the Kobold player. Uh, but that's obviously not the main plan of this uh, Tron deck. Because what he wants to do with Swords of the Ages, he actually um, plays with one of the biggest creatures in old school, and that's Colossus of Sardia. And it was the biggest creature when it got released, actually, uh, in his day. And it's a 9-9 Trampler. And, of course, it's great if you can play the Colossus, attack, and after that, sacrifice it to Sword of the Ages. 
Um, now that's pretty much the um, the idea. I believe he plays a, a red white version, so he has some direct damage and also I believe an archaeologist in his sideboard. So it would be nice to see that card as well in this game. So all in all, it's a very interesting matchup. I have no idea who's favorite here. I have no idea who's uh, who's going to win. So let's quickly go to the games and uh, see what's going to happen. Game number one. And uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Frank starting with a Volcanic Island and playing an Ancestral Recall. So that's a great start. Especially when you're playing Kobolds. Because they're zero to cast. So you can just empty your hand now. Look at that. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's not a full play set. But hey, three Kobolds, turn one. Three creatures. <laughs> that's, that's not too bad. Let's see what the Urza player can do. Playing Urza's Tower. And it looks like he has just passed turn. And I do see some Felber Stones there in his hand. And there's a Batlands from the Kobolds player also passing turn. Cannot find that Kobolds Taskmaster. That would have been sweet right now because then all the Kobolds would have gotten plus one, plus zero. And they would have been able to attack. There's a tap there. Two mana. And there's his first Felber Stone. Having a second one in hand as well. And if he can find an Urza's Mine, that means that he will have Tron online next turn. And then he'll have 8 mana in total. But he'll have to find that Urza's Mine first. Playing a bad lands, it seems. Taking it back and playing a Strip Mine instead. Is he going to strip the Urza's Tower? And maybe they're discussing it. He's not doing it. Passing turn. And look at that. The opponent is playing a Plains. Cannot find that. Urza's Mine here, but plays a Yoshin Soldier, and it's a 1-4 creature from the Antiquities expansion. It's a 1-4, and it doesn't have to tap when it attacks. It's a great blocker. And this is pretty good here, playing the Tome, so that's going to give Frank uh, the opportunity to get some extra cards and try to dig uh, for, a car for something useful here, so that he can do something with the Kobolds. And that's the first damage dealt in this game. The Kobolds player going to 19 after that attack with the Yoshin Soldier. And I do see a Fireball there in hand at Frank's side. What else can we see after playing that basic island? Is he going to use the Strip Mine? And he's actually going to use it on the Mishra's Factory. So that's interesting. So apparently he's not very much afraid of the possible Tron combination. And there's a Basalt, Mon uh, Basalt Monolith. And he has a lot of mana already, even without Tron. And there's a Time Walk. And there's a Fork on the Time Walk. Wow. And I think Fork is one of those, you know, underestimated cards. It doesn't see a lot of play. But Frank now has two turns in a row. And let's see if he can do something useful with them. So far, he's not able to really take advantage of the Kobolds that he's played out. And taking an extra card with his turn. And taking his second extra turn. And tapping for three, and there's a Psionic Blast getting rid of the Ocean Soldier. Passing turn. So I guess the Tron player must be a relief right now. Oh, and look at this, tapping a lot of mana. I believe nine. <laughs> and hard casting a Colossus of Sardia. Well done. Wow. And it looks like Frank is in serious trouble now having that 9-9 Trampler. And he, can, he finally found the Taskmaster. But it looks like it's a little bit too late here. So the Taskmaster gives plus 1, plus 0 to all the Kobolds. I believe it's other Kobolds. It doesn't pump itself. And there's a quick uh, Swords to Plowsiers there by the um, Tron player. And uh, wow, look at this. Look at this board state. It's just beautiful here. A Colossus of Sardia attacking and only three measly Kobolds to block. This is not great. And um, the Kobolds player currently on 17 life. And if it's going to take this damage, is it going to jump block? Oh, interesting choice. So taking then seven damage in total, going to 10 life. And... There is a Chaos or probably has to flip now on the... Well, let's first wait and see if he is going to untap the Colossus. And he is, so probably now going to respond with a flip. Well, you know, probably waiting for the attack first. 
attacking and there is the flip so let's put it in slow-mo so frank really has to hit the colossus here if he wants to stand a chance to win this game bam and that's a beautiful flip well done i mean we've already seen some missed flips but this was this was perfect and this is interesting in Urza's mind here. That means that the Tron player actually has Tron online. And that means that those two towers can produce, uh, generate six mana in total. And all the um, power plants and mines, they can produce two each. So cut a long story short, he has tons and tons of mana. If he can find a fireball, because in that corner of his battlefield, there's a plateau. So if he can find a fireball, he wins this game. So let's see if that's going to happen. He only has two cards in hand playing a factory so that means only one in hand so he has to find a way to draw some cards here and I'm sure he's jealous on that uh, tome on the other side of the table and there is a gauntlet of might so that's a powerful artifact here um, that works really well in these decks you see them in goblin decks as well and they give plus one plus one to your creatures but also your uh, mountains now tap for an additional mana so it also works like a mana flare but just uh, for your on your side and here's an attack by the mistress factory but a, a lightning bolt from the kobolds player passing turn here and i mean who knows maybe the kobolds player can come back oh and this is cool this is um uh, roga of Kirkkeep, and that's pretty nice and that means that it's plus two plus two for all his kobolds and also plus one plus one because of the gauntlet of might and in response, there is a lightning bolt on the Kobolds of Kirkkeep. That's too bad. I mean, finally, he could do some damage with, with Kobolds because he actually haven't, hasn't done any damage yet with the Kobolds. And now he has to tap three red during his upkeep to make sure that he doesn't lose control of his, uh, his Kobold Lord. And he's also drawing, what is he? Okay, playing a Kobold's Taskmaster, and that also gets the plus two, plus two, and also the plus one, plus one from the Gauntlet of Might. And uh, okay, the uh, <laughs> the Tron player is done with it. He's like, okay, I'm just gonna, gonna source it. And the nice thing here is that he's getting six life because of that uh, Gauntlet of Might. And there's another uh, Kobold, and I believe this is the Kobold that gives first strike to all the other Kobolds. I don't know the name at the moment. Maybe you can leave a comment if you do. Um, but that means that all the kobolds now is, have plus one, plus zero, and first strike, but also an extra plus one, plus one bonus from the gauntlet. So they're pretty big. He can now attack, and even with a pumped up factory, it cannot um, it cannot successfully make a successful block here. So there's a lightning bolt on the taskmaster, and there's a lightning bolt. Okay, so we've got a lot of lightning going off in the skies here. And um, when all that uh, dust is settled and the smoke is out of our faces, we can see that uh, the Kobold player managed to do one point of damage, but it's the first damage dealt with Kobolds. So that is pretty good. And there is a Black Lotus here. Look at how much mana. And he's counting, and that's never a good sign. Because they both play with Fireballs, so we can see some serious fire. And look, oh, this is cool. This is amazing. Wow. Playing a huge howl from beyond. Winning. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Well done. Oh, sorry. I really like this. I think this is so flavorful. A kobold with a howl from beyond. I, di I didn't know it was in his deck. I, I mean, honestly. Um, very cool. So that means game one here goes to the kobold player. And now let's see what's going to happen in game number two. Game number two is about to start and it's the Tron player now on the play after that insane <laughs> ending of game number one. And you know, this is why I love old school magic. I mean, in what other magic format can you win by using a, playing a Howl from Beyond on a Kobold of Kirkkeep? Come on. But uh, okay, let's let's see what's going to happen here in game two, and hopefully we, we get to see a game uh, a game three because both of these decks are just uh, really really a joy to to look at. And there's the uh, Kobold Taskmaster here from the Kobolds player on the left, and there's a plateau and animating the factory and also playing a lightning bolt and dealing two damage here. 
So that means that Frank is on 18, playing a basic mountain now. Passing turn. And also playing a basic there and playing a mana vault. Having six mana and exactly, there's a Triskelion. You know, Triskelion is really a no-brainer. Uh, oh, and there's a quick side blast. What I'm <laughs> wanting to say is uh, Triskelion is really a no-brainer when you're playing with Tron. It's, it's such a great creature, uh, especially in old school. But that quick side blast made an end to it. And let's see what the Cobalt's player now can do. It's He's on play at the moment. Tapping two and playing a Chaos Orb and choosing to flip. So let's go to another slow-mo. And another flip here. Going to flip on the Mishra's Factory. And let's see if it's going to hit the target. And another hit here. Boom. And that means that Factory is gone. And a really great matches so far. And there's the power plant. So what he needs now is a mine to get Tron online. And I really hope that we get to see a Sword of the Ages as well. Taking the damage. And there's the mine. So has Tron online. Tapping for seven. And there's a Tetravus. And Tetravus is a 1-1 uh, creature that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. And during your upkeep, you can take those... Oh, I'm explaining the whole card and you're playing a Fireball. <laughs> and also Strip Mine uh, on the tower. So that means it's the end of Tron. He does decide to untap his Mana Vault. And that's, of course, a problem with Tron. It's um, very vulnerable to land removal. And what I what I find is playing with artifact creatures can be very tricky. Oh, and this is nice playing the archaeologist here, and another uh, Tetravus, and that means that with that archaeologist he actually has a combo now, and he has a lot of artifacts in his graveyard, so he can start taking back uh, creatures now, and I think he'll start with the Triskelion. Ah, this is beautiful. Really nice to see an archaeologist in action. Taking back to Triskelion, and it, things are looking really good for the uh, Tron player, actually. And let's see what the Cobalt uh, player can do here on the left. Does have a book now, decides to use it straight away, drawing an extra card, passing turn, so he's looking for answers. Untapping the Mana Vault, and, and that means he has Tron active again, and now he can really start doing some cool things, especially in combination with that archaeologist because look at this just tapping one tower will give you three mana so that means he has six mana now bringing in a triskelion attacking with the tetravis and i mean this looks like it looks like it's in the back here for the tron player and this is the last chance here for the cobalt player for frank to do anything about the situation here but it's extremely difficult now And he's looking at his cards, thinking, what can I do? Is there an out? I see a howl from beyond there, but that's not gonna that's not gonna give him the match or not get, gonna give him the game this time. And tapping two, playing a demonic tutor. Interesting. But what can he look up? I mean he needs a balance, but he's not playing with white. Uh, fork in his hand there. Looking at the fireball option, but he doesn't have enough mana to kill all the creatures. And I don't really think there's anything in his deck that can save him, but then again, I don't know his deck. Playing an Ancestral Recall, drawing three cards. Finding a mountain. And, and the fact that he chose the Ancestral Recall kind of gives you enough information already. He does have a Dragon Whelp that he can play out, but that's not going to save him as well. And remember, the Triskelion has, uh, is a 4-4, but three of those are plus one, plus one counters, and you can also take them off to try to do direct damage. So the Triskelion is also three damage. So that means technically he's only on two. 
And obviously he is in the tank right now trying to find an answer. And that's very understandable. And look at that showing his hand and oh, he's, he's pretty close. Is he actually doing this? Oh, this is cool. Uh, but it's not possible, I think. I think they're discussing what he can and can do. No, 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 no. Very, very interesting, though. A, a lightning bolt and three um, three ways to copy the lightning bolt, three forks. But he didn't have the mana to kind of pull it off and, um, and save himself. So that means it's 1-1. One, one, and we're going to game number three. Game number three. So that's a decisive game of this fantastic match. I wish it was a best of five that we could see these decks play some more games. And, um, you know, if, if you're still excited about old school magic after watching this match, then, um, yeah, then you just better just stop with magic altogether. What a fantastic format. I mean, old school magic. Great, great, great. And um, let's see here. I guess the Cobalt player has a slight advantage. I mean, he gets to start. He's on play. And getting their cards. Hopefully we don't see a mulligan and they can just keep their hands in some honest battle here to decide who wins round number four of the Frost Giant Cup. And look at that. That's a uh, Gauntlet of Might turn one because of that Black Lotus. And the Tron player playing as single planes. Let's see, playing Ursus Tower, does he have a disenchant? And there's the disenchant. White has so many answers. That's why it's such a good color in old school magic. With the four swords to Plowsiers and the four disenchants. And there's a strip mine on the planes. And there's the Ursus mine. So that means he only needs the Ursus power plant to get Tron going. And can he find it? And no, that's actually a factory. And a dragon whelp here. And that's good enough. That can put some pressure on the Tron player. And there's another factory. And attacking with the first one. And remember, he can pump it. That's exactly what he does now. So that means that his worker turns into a 3-3, dealing 3 damage. Attacking you with the Dragon Whelp. Is he going to pump it up with those Volcanic Islands? At least pumping it up for 1, also dealing 3 damage. And that means he probably has a follow-up spell. Passing turn here. Could be a Psy Blast, could be a Lightning Bolt. And then it's always difficult to decide as the opposing player, am I going to attack? In this case, he's not. Doesn't want to lose a uh, Mishra's Factory. And attacking now, pumping it up for four, actually. And in response, there's a Lightning Bolt. And that's the end of the Dragon Whelp. And there's a Basalt Monolith, so another mana rock. And that means the Tron player has quite a lot of mana now. And are we going to see a Sword of the Ages? And yes, we have a Sword of the Ages. It's always good when your opponent grabs the card and it starts reading it. That's always a good sign that you're playing with a cool card, that you're playing with a flavorful card. And uh, very nice to see Sword of the Ages. Hopefully he can do something with it. And he needs creatures now. That's the next step. And there's a Felwer Stone for some more mana ramp. And the nice thing about the Basil Monolith is that you can untap it. And that's exactly what the player is doing. You can untap it at any moment. So it's not like the Mana Vault where you have to wait until the upkeep. So he just untapped it at the end of turn. Tapping all his mana. Oh, and look at this. There's a 9-9 Colossus of Sardia. And he can use the sword to deal 9 damage. And he, he's probably going to wait because he wants to attack with it. I don't think he has enough mana now. He's Yeah, he has enough mana to cast it, but not to use the sword. So if the Cobalt player now has a Shatter, I would play it out right now. I mean, he is calculating. Maybe some Forks and Lightning Bolts. Tapping three. What is he going to do? Playing a Psy Blast. So that's four damage. Playing a Bolt and playing a Bolt. That means 10 damage and in response, he's using the Sword. And so I guess he had enough mana to use the Sword. Interesting. So that means that Frank is on only 6 life. So... And he's playing a Fork. I'm, I'm, I'm loving these decks. I mean, this is again a great play. Forking the Ancestral Recall, drawing 6 cards. 
That's just crazy. But he's on only six life and playing against a deck that has red. I mean, that's very, very risky. Playing a plateau. Tapping for six here, playing another Sword of the Ages. Oh boy, oh boy. And there is a flip, choosing the Sword of the Ages. And is he going to hit for the third time? Putting it here in slow-mo. Oh, it's a miss. Oh, 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 oh. And that's the nice thing about the Chaos Orb. Is it's, I mean, usually you hit it, but it's not a guarantee. Even for an experienced player, I mean, he's, he's flipped orbs, I mean, so often. But it happens. Um, drawing a card, and I must say those, those books are doing a great job for him. I believe in every game he's had a book and he's used it. So that's nice. And look at that mana that the Tron player has, even without an active Tron. And tapping some lands here. And going for the trike. Oh, wow. And I think... Um, no, I'm thinking he can win now, but that's not the case, so he has to wait. But this is a big problem, because the trike also represents three direct damage. And, um, yeah, it's going to be really difficult. At least he needs something to deal with that trike, that's step one. He's got a lot of mana, he has a book to draw an extra card if need be. Again, he's in the tank. And they're discussing the sword. But I don't think the sword, the sword is not the, the, the biggest problem here. The biggest problem is the trike. Looking at his hand, I mean, he has a full hand after that crazy ancestral recall for six. Casting a fireball and forking the fireball. And he's, he's actually interesting. He's not choosing to destroy the trike. And that's game, I guess. I mean, this is a bit confusing. Maybe he didn't see an out anymore. Interesting, interesting choice, but um, in the end, the Tron player here uh, wins this matchup. So he's winning game 1-2-2, two, two. so congratulations. And thank you both for bringing these great decks to the Frost Giant Cup. And just, um, it's a joy to commentate these type of matches. It really is. So so thank you for bringing these very spicy brews. And it, it, it gives me inspiration as well, you know. Um, and thank you, of course, for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing right now. And if you want to see more of this tournament, uh, keep an eye on the channel because I will be posting a round five match and also the top eight games all the way up onto the finals. Now, if you like this content and you want to support me and you want to support the channel, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like this video, leave a comment and spread the word. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.